everyone, it's Claire. Welcome to another video. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my tips on learning a language. So lately I have been like learning other languages and had that interest and I have been searching the internet for lots of tips and I've kind of compiled a list of some of my own tips and some tips that I have found out from the internet as well. So yeah, let's get right into it. Oh yeah, and before I forget, if you're wondering what languages I'm currently learning, I'm doing something that's not really smart and I'm learning five languages at the same time, but I'm learning French, Danish, Dutch, Russian, and Czech. There we go. <laughs> currently, I should say currently. I might add more later, but I'm not like really sure yet. So anyway, let's get right into the video. My first tip is to find your why. What motivates you to learn a language? Why do you want to learn a language? Is It could be a cultural reason that you might have roots connecting you to that language. It could also be that the culture of the country or that area just kind of makes you want to learn the language. You might be going on a trip. Um, what else? <laughs> It could be something that you are required to learn, or it could be for a job. It could be for lots of reasons. So you have to know why you want to learn a language. And I will say, learning a language isn't for everyone. And it can be kind of hard to know if learning a language is for you. But one thing that you can go by is if you just want, like, if you just feel like learning that, and you would dedicate your time to learning a language, dedicate a lot of your time, then learning a language is definitely for you. The second thing that you need to do is you have to decide what language do you want to learn. Now, honestly, in the long run, it's a lot better if you stick with one language and become really good at it instead of learning too many at once and not getting anything out of it. I know <laughs> that I'm doing that, but... For some people, it's easier to just focus on one language. If you do go that extra step and learn languages at the same time, what I would recommend is put more effort in one language than the other one. So if you are choosing to learn one of the languages, Spanish, French, or German, those languages are the like most helpful languages after Google, what? Sorry, okay. <laughs> after English, looking at this Google sign is confusing me. But after English, in the United States, those are the like some of the most helpful languages. And just in general, those languages are really helpful to learn because those countries have a lot of territories in which they speak that language. So if you are learning multiple languages and you choose one of those, it's definitely a good idea to spend a lot of time on one of those or all three of those even because that will really help you and it's much better to put a lot of effort into a language that you'll actually need rather than a language that they hardly even speak anymore <laughs> so yeah just consider that also if you want to learn a language uh that's a little bit more out there and not one of the basic languages Listen to it and Google what languages are similar to that language because it might be easier to start with Spanish, French, or German and then build off of that because, you know, those languages are pretty much the building blocks for other languages. And if also, <laughs> if you don't speak English and you're learning English, then I would recommend going with one of those languages. Um, and if you do speak Spanish, French, or German, then that will also help you kind of get to English. Um, any language that uses the Latin alphabet, and that is a Latin language that kind of originated from Latin, that will really help you. Um, but, you know, there's Germanic languages, and, like, there's languages that use the Cyrillic alphabet. And whatever your learning preferences and whatever you want to learn, go for it. So... Don't be afraid to be ambitious here. Okay, my next tip is to find your resources. 
So what tools do you need? What learning style works for you? And also books versus websites. Which one is the better way to go? So it's definitely important to have like tools. If you don't already have a dictionary for that language, like an English to French dictionary or English to Spanish, English to German, you know, whatever language you're learning, it's definitely a good idea to carry a dictionary with you. Now, if you can't find a dictionary at a bookstore like Barnes & Noble or any other local bookstore, you might have to go on Amazon. And, you know, Amazon has pretty much everything, but I would recommend going to bookstores regularly because they didn't have a Russian section at Barnes & Noble, like at the Barnes & Noble that I have. And then we went there yesterday and they did have a Russian section, and I'm pretty sure I didn't overlook it, but I was really excited, and I was like, oh my gosh, and I was just like looking at the books. But anyway, some languages, it's going to be easier to find resources than others, so if you're looking for like a book or a dictionary or something on that language, the languages that you're going to have lots of luck finding things for are Spanish, German, French, Italian is also up there, that one, there's a lot of Italian resources out there. If you learn any other language, it's going to be a lot harder, but I would definitely recommend to go to Barnes & Noble first because they have a huge selection. And, of course, if you are in, like, a bigger place, uh, you'll have a bigger Barnes & Noble, and it might be easier, and they might have a bigger selection. I'm not really sure on that, but, you know, do your research. Find out where they might have something. Next thing is you need to know what learning style works for you. There's lots of ways that you can learn things. It could just be like the old fashioned flashcards. That's fine. Um, it might be better for you to go with a website. Whatever your learning style is, it could be being in a class. That might work for you. Um, working with a group. Maybe you want to work alone. Um, just kind of play around with it and see what works best for you. Also, books versus websites. Um, both of them are good. The thing is, like, books are better for some reasons because sometimes they actually explain to you, like, why a letter is pronounced the way it is or, you know, like, why you might not pronounce that particular thing. Or I might talk about emphasis a little bit more, whereas websites kind of just teach you things. But you do get pronunciation. So I would recommend, rather than being solely web-driven or solely a textbook person, it's a good idea to have a combination of both, if you can. Um, I know that books can be kind of expensive. You know, go for the ebooks if you need to. Um, but before you buy books in that language, make sure that you love the language and that you're interested in it. So try out a few lang like website courses first. See if you're going to be motivated to continue. Because obviously a language that's a lot more challenging, you're more likely to kind of give up. So always make sure that you love it before you go invest in a book. Because books can be anywhere from like... $13 to like $50 so keep that in mind so if you do go the book route I would recommend getting a for dummies books those books go super in depth and you could just get a phrase book like that's really all you need um, but if you want to go full-on and you kind of want to become sort of fluent then go for the bigger book but the for dummies books are really great another series that's also really good is um i don't know the exact name but you know books about like simple french those ones are going to be really helpful or simple german simple spanish um those ones i found at hastings and then there's this other series that well there's a few series like this but it's like learn the x language in 10 minutes a day and that's also a good one because i mean they are expensive and you know Books come with a price, but I would recommend going with one of those. And it's definitely a good idea if you have had no experience in the language at all, or just a little bit, to go with a book. Um, like the For Dummies, they assume that you've had like no experience with the language at all. And so I would definitely recommend going with that. Now, if you want to go the website route, just note that there are 
some pretty good websites out there that are free. A lot of them do have like a like a pro version or they cost money. Rosetta Stone, I'm going to briefly go over this. It is very expensive. So I would not recommend investing Rosetta Stone unless you're absolutely serious about language learning like it's going to be part of your job because it's literally like oh like a couple hundred dollars like more than that I don't know it's either like three hundred dollars five hundred dollars you know it's in that range it's really expensive so it's definitely better to just go with like an online website so I'm going to be sharing with you guys three of the online websites that I like first of all is called Busu this is my number three pick for learning languages it is pretty good it does have a premium option but they have a decent selection of languages um, English French German Arabic Polish Italian Chinese Japanese Portuguese Spanish Russian and Turkish so that's a pretty wide variety of languages and if you upgrade you can learn up to the 12 languages um, I guess technically yeah it could be up to 12 if you speak a language that they don't offer um, but, you know, it's kind of interesting, so I'm just, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm learning Russian on this because Russian is honestly the most difficult language that I'm, like, tackling. So, you can add friends, and there's a leaderboard, and the lessons are pretty good. I'll show you just a quick lesson. Uh, this is for greeting people. So, it tells you the audio, which I don't have playing right now, and it's, like, simple flashcards, and, you know, you go through through those and then you have to match it so I'll do that real quickly and it like you can add words to vocabulary and stuff and it's pretty simple that's all you have to do and then another really cool thing about Busu though is that you can practice so this is actually like really cool what you can do is you can practice your own writing skills in the language that you're learning and others can correct you or you can correct other people for the native language that you speak so I speak English and I've done this and you know some people have been like oh my gosh that feedback really helped so I would say that Busu is a pretty good language but it doesn't have the widest selection I mean 12 languages is kind of small but they do have a pretty good choice of like lessons and I'd say that overall it's a pretty good website but I would still put it number three because it's not my favorite the next website that I like is called Memrise, and it has, um, as you can see, these are just the courses that I'm learning, um, but if you go over to courses, they have like, what is it? It's like 100 plus courses, I think. Um, the thing about Memrise, though, is that anyone can make courses, so you definitely, if you... Like, you don't want to learn solely from Memrise. You might want to back it up with other things just to make sure that everything is, you know, right. But native speakers can help you. And it's pretty fun. There's a bunch of choices here. You can also do other things, though, like math and science. So I'm just going to go to French because, you know, French is like, I am say I'm pretty good at French. We'll go to the introductory introductory conversation so we'll review real quickly um but you know it involves typing and you would write it and then that's all you have to do so that's really simple and i mean there's more to it than that <laughs> that was just like really brief and then you also can earn like badges and stuff and you get a lot of points and you can add friends and stuff so i have a profile and then mems are these things that help you like learn and you get words and there's like science involved to it and they're always talking about how it was so sciencey like scientists help make it perfect and what they do is they have you review words just as they're about to like lose from your memory and it's pretty cool um yeah so they have a huge variety and i'd say that overall it's definitely number two I use a lot and also all of these are an app version so you can take them on the go which is really great but finally my favorite language learning site 
is Duolingo. I think it's like one of the best. Um, as you can see, you can learn a lot and you have a daily goal. And I'm only learning Danish and French here because the other courses, like the Russian course, wasn't really helping me and the Dutch course was kind of confusing and then the Czech course hasn't even been launched yet. But it's 100% free. There are no ads, no pro at all, and no hidden fees. But there are a bunch of language choices and um, they're still adding some. So some of these are like in beta, you'll notice. Like Russian, Esperanto, Ukraine, um, Welsh. Some of these are still hatching. Like... You know, a lot of these are still hatching, actually. And the thing is, if you click on them, like, they're going to be done, like, well, this one, it's 100% done hatching. But, you know, like, check isn't going to be launching until, like, the 17th of April of 2017. So that is the bummer, but, you know, they're working on it. So I'll just show you kind of what a session might look like. Um what you do is you like strengthen them but you go through this and then it's like pretty simple um i i think that it's a great way to learn things and the nice thing is that the app does work offline which is really nice so we'll call that it for now but anyway those are definitely the things i would recommend if you're going to learn a language for websites okay so my fourth tip is to know where to start. Um, I would definitely recommend to find beginner courses and beginner books. That's why the For Dummy books are so good because they just assume that you have no experience. Um, starting with beginner courses, I would definitely recommend, even if you do have some sort of knowledge from like a class, it's still good to start with a beginner course because you don't know where they're going to start you otherwise. Um, also, starting with the alphabet, this may seem really simple. Um, even if you're learning a language that does use the Latin alphabet, like, um, I took a French class in middle school, and I'm going to take it next year, actually. I'm still in middle school. Um, but the French course, well, the teacher had us learn the alphabet, and I'm like, oh, we're learning the alphabet, why? But it was so helpful and we like color coded and everything. And you know, if having printables to help you learn the language, if that's going to help you, then definitely do what's going to help you. Um, I think, especially if you're learning a language using like the Cyrillic alphabet or something like that, um, it's definitely a good idea to learn the alphabet first. Um, that's the thing that I didn't like about the Russian course on Duolingo. It didn't start you with learning like, it has the alphabet course, but it doesn't start you with, like, learning the sounds of just the letters alone. But, yeah, that's why I like Memorize, because it does teach you that. So, if you want to learn Russian, go with Memorize, because it tells you the sounds of the letters. Um, and then also, simple vocabulary is a great place to start. Just, like, words that you're going to need to know, like, food and you know, how to address someone properly, you know, things like that. Um, but another thing that's good to know is terms, like, if you are traveling, find a travel course, like, so that you know how to say where is the bathroom, because that's definitely going to come in handy. Next tip is to don't be shy. What I mean by this is don't think that if you're learning a language, you can just go up to someone and be like, hey, I can speak this language. Let's speak together. Don't do that because, you know, you could say something wrong and offend the person. So you want to, like, by don't be shy, um, what I mean by that is to learn how to speak in another language, you must speak. So don't just, like, sit on your computer, you know, typing things in. It's good to type things in and to write things out, but you have to practice saying it in your head. And something that my French teacher had me do is, well, she had the whole class do this, but when we would write things out, she would have us, like, say the alphabet while we were writing it so that we were practicing the letters. And that's definitely a good idea. Um, so you must speak, try everything. Even if it's a sentence that's like, well, I'll never need to know how to say, I am a butterfly. But, you know, you never know 
Halloween. You could dress up as a butterfly. Also, practice with friends and family, or if you know someone who speaks the language, uh, you could say, hey, could you please check my pronunciation on this? I'm not sure it's quite right. Uh, that could definitely help you. But, you know, practice with your friends and family. Maybe your friend or your uh, family member will learn the language with you. And that's just kind of good to, you know, learn with them. Also, another tip is to always practice. So try to set a daily goal and stick with it. I don't know if Busu has a daily goal, but I know that Memrise does. Um, like the lowest goal, I don't know, it's like three or five days a week or something. Um, but you see you get a streak and that kind of motivates you. Oh, it's five minutes a day. That's my goal. So on Memrise for your daily goal, you have to do it in every course to get that streak not just on one, whereas on Duolingo, if you do like 10 experience in French, you don't have to do 10 experience in Danish. Just throwing that out there. Um, but you know, they do offer incentives, which kind of make it fun, like lingots. It's the virtual currency where you can go buy um, something else. And then, you know, you get a streak and it's kind of fun to be like, hey, I have a higher streak than you. That's kind of fun. And then um, here you earn ranks which is pretty cool, and you get points too. Um, but yeah, always practice. And another thing that you can do is whenever you're alone, or even if you're not alone, like you're waiting for the bus, like do a quick lesson or go through some phrases in your head. If you're brushing your teeth in the morning, like, you know, get the app and just go through it and be like, okay, like practice in your head. And that's just something that you can do. And if you want to be successful at language learning, to always be practicing when you're, of course, not like at work or at school doing something that, like paying attention, uh, then practice and go through it. Also, it's important to remember to be patient. The chances that you'll learn a language in a day is very unlikely. It takes time and perseverance. And you know, like they said, they didn't build Rome in one day. That was I, that quote was probably wrong. I don't know, but language takes time, and you're definitely not going to learn it in one day because it's just it's something that takes practice. Now, I will say that the similar the language that you're learning is to your native language, it's going to be a lot easier to learn than a completely different language. For instance, I noticed that for me, French and Danish come really easy just being like an English speaker um, but you know Russian and Czech uh, and Dutch those ones are a little bit harder for me to catch on to so that's just something you throw out there that you do have to be patient because it will take time also you've probably heard this before but expose yourself to the language so look up you know like book ex excerpts or um, newspapers and read it in that language. See how much you can get out of it. Um, watch movies. So I don't think that you have to buy the movie in that language anymore. I think now they have like language settings and you just change it. So try to like find that in you could or you could add like the subtitles and practice reading. You can either watch an English movie and practice reading like you know like the French subtitles or you could watch the movie like in French and have English subtitles. Um, both are very helpful. You could practice your listening and your reading skills. Um, but also like listen to the radio and their music and then you'll get a sense of culture as well. Okay, my second to last tip is, actually wait, this is my last tip. Have fun with it. Like make it a fun challenge. And if you aren't having fun, then learning a language isn't for you. And, you know, you want to be doing something that's fun. And I think that language learning is fun, but it's definitely not for everyone. And I understand if it's not your thing. But, you know, just make it something enjoyable. Like, maybe, like, set goals for yourself. So, if you can say, like, I don't know, five sentences in each language, like, a week, then you get to reward yourself with ice cream. I don't know, your reward could be something different. But you know, something as simple as that. So 
I hope that this video was helpful and hopefully some of you stuck around and watched the whole thing. I don't know if you guys are as interested in language learning as I am, but I just thought that if you were, I would share my tips with you. Thank you guys so much for all of the support and for being awesome and amazing and like sending me mail and stuff. Like those jammograms are so much fun to read. I love reading your comments and you guys are so sweet. Okay, let's see. Can I say something in another language? Probably saying this wrong. If you're if you speak Russian, correct me in the comments if it's wrong. Um Paka!